Hello, it's me again, and we're going to continue our journey through the cubes. So this is a master cube, and um, we're going to kind of extend our concepts in terms of how we come up with strategies and algorithms to apply it to when we have higher layers. So as you recall, we went through the normal cube, which is a fairly straightforward um, solve. The first thing that you do when confronted with a higher layer puzzle uh, from something that you've seen before is first correlate it to the previous puzzle to see where the similarities are. So starting from here, as you can see, the, this part here is all the skewed part. We've got the middle, and then we've got the corners um, over here. And this is pretty much solved the same way. So we could probably solve that exactly the same way. Now, because this is a higher layered puzzle, we have layers that are thrown in here that actually don't seem to correlate with the movement of these guys, such as this layer over here. Now notice when I turn this, I still have my original skew form here, but I've got this extra layer thrown in here. I also have another layer thrown in over here as well. So how do I strategize with this? How do I keep my perspective and how do I go about solving um, something like this? And again, most of the point of this is just to come about different strategies. Well, this is where we start to use something called uh, something like commutators. We kind of introduced that concept before. A commutator is basically a series of instructions where you do a series of movements and then you reverse what you just did. So it has a form of A, B, A, I, B, I. An example of that is where you go down, down, up, down, up, up. Now that seems pretty simple, but that's actually at the heart of what a commutator is. For reference purposes, I'm going to um, I'm going to define the movement much the same way I did with the skew here, where I'm just going to say that this is going to be a right-sided move. So this is going to be right down, and this is going to be right up, and this is going to be left, whoop, left down, and left up. And that's all I'm going to be doing. Um, I kind of picked this type of puzzle because of its simplicity and movement, uh, so that way we don't have to get too top-heavy with uh, annotations. Now the essence of a commutator is once I've defined a series of movements which will just move it out and then move it right back in, I then make some other move in some other plane, such as these other layers, before and in the middle of the commutator, which will cause a movement of the, of the different components around in a predictable way. So what I can do is I can apply the strategies of the skew and solve that, but then with the layers that have been inserted in here, start inserting that in the middle of a commutator to see how that works. So in other words, if I were to do the uh, down, down, up, before I do the down, up, up, I'm going to make some movement and see where that moves around. So down, up, up. So basically, to review, a commutator is a, a very simple series of instructions as we showed, but just before you do the commutator and in the middle before you reassemble it, you do some other move and then you reverse that move. So here's an example. What I want to do is I want to see if I can move these edges around here. So just to define the structure here, we've got these new edges that we didn't have before. An edge is defined as something that articulates two centers. So that's what this does. A corner is something that joins basically three faces, and that's what this does. This articulates with this and this. And we've also got this over um, these um, corners over here too. So can I design uh, some sort of an uh, algorithm uh, by using the concept of a commutator to move these guys around? Well, this motion over here, moving it down and down is overlapping these guys here. So that would be a good way of moving these around. But to specify the specific ones that I want to move around, I'm going to start off by doing a movement of one layer. So let's say I move this layer here in front of me. So now I'm going to do the commutator, but halfway through it I'm going to move this back and see what happens. So we're going to go right down, left down, right up, and I'm going to reverse that middle slice move like this, then I'm going to I'm going to reverse that that uh, that commutator. So it's going to be right down, left up, right up. And now we take a look at what happened. What got affected? Nothing else from the skew standpoint got affected because it was just a simple commutator, but the middle that I did move did get affected. So the green and white ended up here. Here's green and white. So this ended up here. The white and yellow 
ended up here and the yellow and orange ended up here. So basically, I've just designed a commutator that had a very definitive and potentially predictable effect. This moved to here, this moved to here, this moved to here. That in essence is how we generate a three cycle move. And this is this became very important when deciding how to solve some of the higher layered puzzles such as the pyramids, just the kind of figuring out by way of comm commutators and limited motions. So now we generate a prediction based on that and run the experiment. So my prediction is that if I do the same thing, this orange and yellow, orange and yellow is gonna be here, green and white is gonna be here, green and yellow is going to be here. So let's see if that works. So again, I'm going to move this down, do one half of my commutator, down, down, up, and now basically reverse what I did with this middle slice. So move it back and then reverse the commutator. So down, up, up, and it moved exactly how I predicted it would move. So the orange and yellow is here. So the prediction is the next one should reconstitute it back. In other words, it should once again move this white and green right back over here. This to here, this to here, this to here. So we'll whoops, slice this down towards us. Down, down, up. Slice it back. Down, up, up. So we've now defined a way of moving these around. Now notice when that happened, these um, corners also moved around. So we're gonna have to find ways of potentially dealing with these individually. Now let's see if we can reverse it the other way. If we just do it the opposite way, move this to here, this to here, and this to here. So let's slice it down on the left side. Then we'll just do the commutator from the left. So that's gonna be down, down, up and then reverse that commutator here, or reverse that slice there rather, and then down, up, up. And as predicted, the yellow and green is over here, the green and white one is over here, and this is over here. So that caused the same kind of thing, but just the opposite way. So let's see if we can get it back. Move this down here. Once again, down, down, up. Put it back up again, down, oops, yeah up, up, okay. So now one more should be able to bring this back up to here. So this will come here, this will come here, this will come here. Now notice these guys are moving around like crazy. So move this down here, down, down, up, move it back, and down, up, up. So very good. So what we've done is we've just designed an algorithm, a commutator basically, that predictably move these around in a three cycle way. And that's how you design it. Just do a simple commutator that, that um, deconstructs it and then reconstructs it with A, B, A, I, B, I. Before you do it, make some sort of a move in some layer and then in the middle of it, move it back and then you'll have yourself something that'll turn things around. Well, that's good. So now we know how to solve the skew portion and we know how to place layers, but what about these guys here? Is there a way to find motions that can isolate these motions once you have these guys in? Well, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is stick with the simplest uh, kind of a form and position it to where whatever movement I make makes these go away from each other. Remember, this one caused these um, edges here to overlap and that caused them to switch around. Let's see if I hold it over here and use this, the axis by which it turns, by moving these, these layers, these edges don't come in contact with each other. So maybe this is just a way of moving these around. And to keep it simple, what I'm gonna do is just do exactly the same commutator. I'm gonna move slices maybe in the opposite way, doesn't really matter. So let's try it in the opposite way. I could move it forward, I could move it back, but I'll move it um, back over here on the right side and just start my commutator on the right side here. So this will be right down, down, up. And I'm gonna just take the slice back as I'm halfway through and then reverse the commutator. So that's gonna be down, up, up. So what happened is I did not move these because they didn't overlap. This red one ended up oh, right here. This white one ended up here 
and this orange one came right back here. So now we've, de we've designed a three cycle that takes this, moves it here, this to here, and this to here. And it isolates that, so that's, that's pretty good. So now my prediction is that the next time I do that, this orange is going to be here, this red is going to be here, and this white is going to be peeking out at me over here. So let's slice this out, do our commutator. And this is from the right side, so right down, left down, right up, slice it back, right down, right up, left up, and there's that white one looking back at us. One more should, um, should solve the whole thing. So once again here, down, down, up, bring it back, down, up, up, and same thing. So that's pretty good. What about the other side? Let's, let's do it from this side here, from the left side. I'm going to bring the left side down and move it from here. So down, down, up, slice it back, down, up, up, and yeah, this yellow one ended up here orange ended up here, whoa, sorry about that, this yellow one ended up here, orange ended up here, white ended up here. So we have a, another three cycle from the left side. The prediction, next time I do it, orange going to be peeking out at me over here. So let's move this up, see what happens. Left, down, right, down, left, up. Bring it back, left, down, right, up, left, up. There's the orange. One more should bring it back again. Slice it up, down, down, up, here, down, up, up. So that's pretty good. Um, what we have now is we've designed, based on this new commutator that we've, we've just developed, a way of moving these um, edges around and moving these corners around so that we can uh, try, to, um, uh, try to apply the solve. Then what we do is we take our commutator, our algorithms, apply it to the puzzle. And it's not enough just to know that it could work and that to have designed it, you got to actually run the experiment. We can't just be theoretical with this because you may come across situations that you didn't anticipate, parity situations, so it's best to run that. I'll say that I really like this puzzle because first off it looks a lot like a Rubik's Cube. It's got the same shape, the same color pattern actually. So when you look at this, at first glance, people might think, oh, it's Rubik's Cube, but then they look closer and you see how different it is. Um, so let's just scramble it and see if we can apply our strategies that we just developed to this puzzle. And for the sake of brevity, abracadabra. Okay, the other thing that I like about the higher order puzzles is it always looks so much more impressive when it's scrambled. You got colors flying everywhere. You know, the other concept that I want to mention is when you get the higher orders, you also get the notion of deconstruction and reconstruction. So, in other words, we know of an algorithm that'll take this and put this here, this to here, and this to here. But what if it wasn't this that I wanted to put here? What if it was something, say, um, something say down here. So what you'd want to do is turn this over here, do your algorithm, and turn it back. So literally it's like an algorithm inside an algorithm inside a commutator. And you keep building layers of complexity. And you can deconstruct it any way you want as long as you bring it back. This was very useful to me when deciding and figuring out how to solve the super cubes and also the crazy megaminks and the crazy cube series, designing these commutators and algorithms, deconstructing the puzzle and, and reconstructing it. You just have to be careful that you can find your way home. So literally you're developing algorithms as you can. You don't want to, once we've developed something that'll cycle these three, to put this over here, you don't want to design a completely new algorithm. Just, decon just deconstruct it, do your position, and then move it back. So the first step is solve this just like a cube. Um, we know that pretty well. Uh, let's start off with the green layer, as I, as I always do that. This is already in. Where's the other green? So green and white, right over here. So as you recall, we wanted to move this, we want to turn this clockwise. And we had a way of doing that, which we figured out last time. So we're going to hold this here and just do our clockwise, start off with a clockwise rotation, which is actually here. So turn, 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 puts that in. So the next here is another green. 
green and orange. So we're gonna to wanna to move that down to here. Once again, this has to rotate and this has to rotate clockwise. So move this here and clockwise turn, 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 turn and turn. So now this is in place. One more green right over here. Okay, so this has to turn um, counterclockwise. No, sorry, clockwise. So move this over here, start our clockwise turn. Turn, turn, turn. Okay, so we have our first layer here. As you recall, the rest is pretty simple. We've got white on top of here. I'm just gonna put the white where it's supposed to go here. Turn, turn. This is our crisscross algorithm that we developed. Now that I know that here, I'm gonna see exactly what's opposite. That's gonna be the yellow. The yellow is here. So I'm gonna move the yellow up to here to move it down here. The algorithm, that crisscross algorithm, as you recall, will move this to here and flip-flop these guys. So this will end up here. So this yellow is gonna end up 180 degrees, which is fine. This 180 degrees strategy, I use a lot with um, various puzzles because it's easy enough to flip back. So as promised, this white one's here. I'm gonna move this down. I'm rushing through this because this is the same strategy that we used with the previous puzzles. All right, so these are where they where I want them to be. I want to move this down. Upon moving this down, these will crisscross back. Turn, 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 turn. This is just skew strategy here. Now we get the top part here. So these are solved here, and they can't be. They all have to be out of sync. So in order to turn this, and I have to turn it twice to move it down and then back, because each one will rotate it once. So that's one, two. This is going to be a counterclockwise turn. So that's going to be one, 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 two, 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 two. All right, so now all of these are flipped around. As you recall, we turned it here. And one, two counterclockwise one two so a counterclockwise turn will solve the skew part so that's going to be one 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 two 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 and two so the skew part is done so these blues are in place whites are in place and way back when that was the end of the puzzle that was the end of the story. And we explored how to do it with higher layers or more higher order shapes. So this is just another layer added.